graphical highlight of Unreal Engine 4 is our real-time dynamic global illumination and glossy specular reflection. So these objects that you see in the statues, as they change their state from a diffuse material to a specular, they not only change the way light bounces, but they also change the color of the light bouncing around in the scene. Unreal Engine 4 also supports fully emissive materials, so materials that you see in your scene can not only receive light and be emissive, but also transmit light. We have support for full, shadowed, and lit subsurface scattering. This knight, as I move around, you can see the light through him changing based on the opacity and filter color. Unreal Engine 4 uses a fully deferred render. One of the applications for this is deferred decals. So this sphere drops wet decals on the ground, which change not only the diffuse and specular, but also the normals of the surface. This is, again, all fully dynamic and real time. This is our orrery room. And this solar system that you see moving around has been placed to demonstrate our indirect lighting. If I change the time of day, the sunlight will begin to stretch further into the room and this will begin to show more of the color of the light bouncing off of the floor and onto the surrounding metal walls. If I change the color of the carpet, you can see that the color of the room changes quite dramatically. I can do that again. There we go. Now, if I were to say, grab my spotlight planet here and use it to illuminate my room, as I move it around, it illuminates different elements of the scene, which then bounce their colored light on every aspect of the scene correctly. You can even see the reflection of the different floor colors on the sphere itself. This next room highlights our uh, dynamically lit particle system. So I have a number of particle systems here, all being illuminated by the dynamic elements of the scene. I can turn on my own flashlight and illuminate it, or even pick up my spotlight planet from the previous room and throw it in, and you'll see this all works together dynamically in real time. Out here we're highlighting our direct and indirect lighting on particles. So I have a volumetric particle system that is being illuminated from within by chunks of lava being uh, shot up through the vent, which use the volume of the particles to determine the amount of light it transmits through. The particles are being illuminated directly by the sun and also picking up indirect illumination from the sun bouncing off the world. They're also correctly shadowing the environment around them. Unreal Engine 4 supports GPU particles, which allow us to have extremely high numbers of particles along with complex simulations. So for example, this room has over a million particles in it alone in various different elemental styles have fire and ice, obviously, with very different effects. And then I have a final magic effect. And this effect is demonstrating our vector displacement fields, which can be uh, dynamic and fully interactive. So I have a vector field on this object. And as I move it around, it displaces the particles as it travels through them. And I can even turn it off and have it all wisp away. This room is highlighting our improvements to post-process. We now have per-pixel lens flares, so any bright element in the scene will become part of the lens flare, as well as full eye adaptation. So if the windows were to suddenly close, my scene becomes dark, my eye adaptation will adapt the focus exposure. And then if the floor were to collapse, I have bright elements on my scene, so my lens flares are back, and it's all, again, fully dynamic and fully real-time. Heading up the stairs, we come to the hallway from our demonstration. And this has both my night from the, the cinematic and also full time of day. So if I watch the sunset, you can see the light changes quite dramatically. When the sun's completely behind the building, the sky will go to night. And I have a very different lighting environment. And then, then as the sun rises, again, I change completely. Now, the most impressive thing about this entire demonstration is that for the entire thing, I've been in the editor the entire time. At any point, I can come out of our immersive mode and go right back into my tools. So I can just fly around, select objects, and move them around and interact with them 
because I am in my editor and in my tools the whole time. We've dramatically improved our play. It's now instantaneous. I can jump in at any time and just run around. So this gives me extremely fast iteration time. At any point, I can see the changes I've made in game without leaving my editor. We've rewritten our user interface. It's all completely dockable and reskinnable, so I can put any part of it in any part of my, uh, my layout. We now have this details panel that you see on the right. And details allows me to see not only the properties of the object, but also in-depth information about it. For example, what class it is, where its location in the world, uh, as well as what materials are applied, and even drill down further and see what textures are part of that material. I mentioned I can see what class it is, and that's very important because this is a blueprint. In Unreal Engine 4, we use Kismet to script not only our levels, but also individual assets in what we call blueprints. A blueprint allows me to have an instanced class placed in my level that can have custom behavior. So for example, when I click on this statue, you can see the Kismet graph executing in sequence, so I can see exactly what's going on at any point. This allows for much more powerful debugging. At any point, I can jump out and go over and begin making changes, drag off to create new connections with a nicely laid out list of things that I can uh, call from this point. I can also quickly put a breakpoint in, and now when I play, if I trigger that breakpoint, it will stop the editor stop the game, allow me to step through and see the state of any of these values, and then resume and see the continuing game. Turn that breakpoint off again, and if I wanted to say make a change to this, it's as easy as dragging off, so I'll add a delay, give it a default duration of three seconds, and wire it in, and now when I play, when I click on my statue, I hit my delay, I see the countdown for how long it's got left, and then it executes the script again. So this allows us to make changes and iterate on them extremely quickly. Talking a bit about the indirect lighting, if I select the post-process for this environment and filter for the uh, voxel lighting intensity, if I bring that down, this is what the scene would look like without any bounce lighting being derived. So there's no complex specular, there's very little uh, secondary lighting in the scene, but if I bring that back up, I begin to get my metallic reflections, my complex secondary lighting on all of my objects, as well as a much more realistic environment. Over in the orrery room, if I select that orrery, I can see there's a number of properties that are, are being set up inside of this blueprint. So in the construction script, I have all of the parts of it being put together in sequence. And then I re reach the sequence split, which creates each planet individually. Each one of these lines represents an individual planet. And then I have all of the variables that are used to drive the various behavior. Now, this is what the variables tab looks like. If I dock this here, you can see there's quite a few of them. But all of these can be categorized and given custom names. And what that means is that when I get back to the placed version of it, I don't have a huge flat list of variables like I have in my editor. I have nicely categorized, friendly named properties that allow me to make changes without having to know how the script was made. Now, I showed play an editor, which instantaneous, I'm in, my game is running, I can interact with my planets, run around. But now I'm going to use simulate, and simulate plays the game, but doesn't put me in it. So now I'm still in the editor, I have complete control over my tools, I can see properties for any object, I can select the various elements in my scene, but because I'm not in the game, I can watch everything happen. And then at any point, I can click possess and become part of the game, and begin interacting with my game as a player. So one last thing I'm going to show off. Um, if I hit play and run around in my world, I can hit F10 to eject. And now I see my player's representation in the world again. If I open up his details panel and his code view, it will populate with the functions for that class, in this case, a player. If I double click on one of those functions, it will open the source file for that class 
and go straight to that function. So this has leg strength and I'll change that, minimize this, and I'm going to click compile and possess. So I'm back in my character playing the game. I can't jump very high, but when it finishes compiling, I become superhuman. So I can make these kind of changes while I'm playing the game, while I'm in my editor, while I'm making changes to my environment and my tools and everything, all in real time as you see.